Well, the icon is gone and the icon is back. This one is the all new Land Rover Defender. We'll take you on an in-depth tour on the exterior and the interior. Different trims for you today. And of course, it's still available in two different lengths. So let's join us here on Autogefühl. Full HD, full screen and full length. As always, let's go. Land Rover or Range Rover models nowadays all somewhat look the same in the front especially, but that's not the case for the Defender. The Defender got an own unique look, reminding us a little bit of those angular lines, not as angular as it used to be, yes, so we have some round shapes right there, but definitely still with an own front face. Also with those round headlamps right there, and here in the silver paint we also show you different paints very soon in a big Defender batching there in the front. Interesting also on top of the hood that we have, you know, those um, off-road rem rem uh, reminiscence. It's really interesting here in the black cladding. So this car does have some emotional features and that's also why people buy it. You can still get the 90 and the 110. This one, of course, obviously the 110, the five-door version, but it does not correspond to the overall wheelbase. Here, length is 4 meters 75 or 187 inches. That means it's a wheelbase of 3 meters and 2 or 119 inches and the biggest techno technology change is there's no rigid axle in the rear anymore you have both independent suspension this will give you more comfort will also mean less off-roadish but yeah i mean nowadays you can build also good off-road cars with independent suspension i think that's that's key 3.5 tons for the towing capacity and you can see here in the side profile this again the five door version pretty much upright this typical angular Land Rover Defender design, so it also is a little bit different than again to the other Land Rover or Range Rover models. Then also those typical styling elements, so they try to keep some quotes from the past vehicles. You can also get 18 inch steel wheels if you want an off-road character. Those ones are the biggest 22 inch aluminum wheels if you want a more you know menacing street look, so to say. Contrast clangs in the lower end, also angular door hands that fits to the car very well. And then you also get this you know, retro styling element right there. If it makes sense, yes or no, I mean, that's probably another question. Um, but at least it adds some uniqueness to the car. Also the small design elements right there, we have this cut in in those crossover wheel arches. So we'll soon also show the three door version to you. This one, the five door so far, what do you think about the design? And let me give you some off-road figures. Approaching angle in the front, 38 degrees maximum. Descending angle in the rear, 40 degrees, but that rather accounts for the three-door version. 90 centimeters of wading depth, and here you can still get the big replacement tire here at the back of the car. Other than that, it's also very distinctive as for the rear design. For example, here with those squircle design elements here in the rear as for the lamps. And of course, this door here will still open in this very distinctive way because the rear tire would be just too heavy to flip it open. Soon more about the interior. This one, by the way, is also the first edition, a special launch edition model with some design elements. But you can individualize this car so much yeah, but the price, it will at least start at 50k and you can easily get it, you know, rather to 90 or something. So this is also something that has been lost over time. So this is a super expensive vehicle now. So as for engines, the good thing is, whereas all the other manufacturers use strange nomenclature to hide their engine format, here you can really rely on the horsepower figures. So what we have here, we have P half, we have also petrol and diesel. So there's a P300, that's also the horsepower figure for the petrol, a P400E with a mild hybrid, six cylinder. Then there's the P400E with the P half, so the plug-in hybrid, and then diesel a D200 and D240. And again, those are also the horsepower figures, so pretty easy to remember in this case.
now to the interior. Right there, inside of the doors, we start right there. So soft touch materials right there. And here some screws visible. And there's also this off-road design element. So pretty fancy, definitely. Not too big, those inside door pockets. And then this one is a special bright interior. This has a unique styling. Um, I mean, it's like fixed plastic, but that also adds some rugged character to the car. Then again, those leather red covers right here and there. Open boxes also again to remind of the old model and more visible screws. So definitely a different style than we know from other Land Rover or Range Rover models. Also some fabric inserts at those seats. Um, not sure if it's leather red or animal skin here. I don't have the overview of all the seating materials available yet, but there will of course be different one available in the bright color. It fits the car very well actually. At least if you can then live with some stains later on. So this interior does have something which reminds us of the other models, but still has enough uniqueness to be an own Defender style. Getting inside here, this typical upright seating position. When sitting here, yeah, it is somewhat similar than if you would enter a Land Rover Discovery. Um, but that's not a bad thing, definitely. You, again, this command driving position, pretty long hood, so... Um, but what is good is that you all have those upright windows and so you still have somewhat a good all-around view. Interior overview here with this horizontal stress and a lot of cubby holes right there. The screen here is in demo mode so we will see um, different stuff that can be displayed at the moment actually. Then the steering wheel can be moved up and down electronically and also a little bit inward and outward again. All digital instruments, they are in the middle part and you can see when they're shut off Everything is just black or dark. Let's see if we can turn the demo mode right on again. Um, those ones here are not visible buttons, so to say. Um, they have clicking sound. There will be also buttons here for the cruise control. This will be illuminated then when the car is properly powered on. On the left side then, for example, for the volume control. Some of the materials I'm not quite certain of. So um, it's a very expensive vehicle and from some build quality stuff, I would expect then a little bit more. There we have demo mode again here for this camera, especially for the off-road camera, all around view. Then you also can see the inclination and so on. This will be pretty cool. Also, for example, not sure if they show the weight sensing mode as well. So there you can pick the off-road modes when you are in this off-road gear selector, which will be probably placed here, I guess. Always nice to follow those demo modes. I mean, I don't have to click it myself. Of course, I would prefer clicking it myself. But in this case, it's also nice to have a showcase sample. It will be working via touch. And I mean, to access it, yeah, it's a little bit blocking here with the gear shifting lever, which is integrated in the console. Apple CarPlay is also available. Finally, now they don't go their own way anymore. As for that, there will also be a GPS sample quite soon. So a lot of things you can control here. Weather apps, for example. Yeah, I mean, it looks like English weather, doesn't it? <laughs> but I mean, the weather is not too different from the ones we have in, in Germany usually, so I can't complain. There we go, the showcase of the 360 degree camera. If that is the real resolution, then it looks indeed pretty amazing, very interesting. We wait for some more stuff to come. There's the Land Rover logo. Um, there's also the Apple CarPlay. Um, good morning, Elizabeth. No, that's maybe the Queen, Alex. This again, the home screen. Then you can have the GPS or the phone right there. Ah, there's the GPS. So they also have this 3D animation then with those buildings. Of course, when we test drive the car, we'll see how that one plays out. There we go. Now I would like to see how the Apple CarPlay is integrated. I think we'll get very soon to that. Um, the layout here is actually quite clean, you know, how it stands here between those two horizontal bars. I really like that. Um, and the top part of the dashboard, by the way, is also from soft touch. So that's actually pretty cool. Other than that, um, I guess this one will be the climate unit on the right side. So probably the one for off-roading and then down here, climate unit control. And they kept this area also pretty clean. So most of the stuff has actually gone into the GPS. And that's the way you can also then pick a new destination so and while we wait for the carplay to show up maybe we can zoom a little bit out again because then i can already show you that in the 
lower part. We have USB-C device and normal USB-C device and a nano SIM. So for your smartphone to connect it then with the mirroring function. And there's another 12 volt power supply as well. And then below that, it's hard to see, but there's you know a lot of storage space from the side or from, from above. You can reach that all. Then you have those adaptive cup holders. They are cladded with those rubber pads. And then, you know, the materials here, they are a little bit weak then again. So we have light and shadow in the interior. This one is pretty well attached. This very big armrest right there. And underneath we have serious storage space together also with the cooling function for this pad here. And in the front of that, as we see the simple, there's also an inductive charging pad available for your smartphone. But when you connect it with the Apple CarPlay or Android Auto via cable, then of course it makes somewhat more sense to, you know, just have it with the cable connection and then maybe put it here in the lower part where there's, where there's this very big cubby hole in the front. So a very refreshing interior, definitely to see a difference to the one we see in the other Land Rovers or Range Rovers. So overall, I think, very reusable. And of course, you know, all those square dimensions, you feel that you have the space here in the front. Now to the biggest advantage of the 5 door version. Yeah, of course, you can easily access the rear compartment. Again, the visible screw design element. Same as in the front, we also have those soft touch materials at the rear doors on the inside. And then some reasonable space here for the rear bench, because everything is built in an upright character. So you don't lose too much length, also as for the legroom and so on. Let's also test that. It's getting side right here. And there's ample of space and probably also the best package for the Land Rover or Range Rover cars because it's not the longest Land Rover or Range Rover we have here, but truly one with the most legroom. So I really like that approach. Um, see here the lower floor raises just a little bit. Then you can add an infotainment system right there, or there's also USB supply. And it's really cozy to sit here in the interior, also in a very upright way. Headroom is also plentiful with one with A6 or 6 with one. And then since this car is standing so high, there's also no significant middle tunnel in the rear. So it just raises just a little bit here, so it can easily also sit in the middle seat here. Very comfortable to travel with four Actually, in this case, with five tall adults, some charging device in the lower part, 12 volt power supply, USB both two times. Seat heating optional available also for the rear seating area. Then you have some adaptive cup holders with some rubber pads right there. And you can already flip the seats from here. Oh, and by the way, like this, you can put the lower part of the rear bench down first. Then you should actually remove the head restraints or pull them all the way in at least. Let's see, well, there's an interesting cladding here on the back part. Also a nice retro style. So let's see about those head restraints first. It's because they can be flipped for that. Like this, and like this. Then we can try again. Yeah, that's an easier solution definitely than taking them out. So, and then it actually does fit and also they hide behind that one. Then you have a very even loading area. So that's pretty cool. This is really interesting. This part here, the inside of the rear doors will flash when someone is approaching from the rear. It's like a blind spot monitor for the inside of the rear doors that warns you when or before getting out. And another unique feature, if you look from the inside to the, let's say, side ceiling, so between the rear compartment and the trunk, you have those skylight views, those very small additional windows in the ceiling. Pretty amazing. Then let's open this rear hatch. Here we go with this side opening. Pretty fancy. And wow, a lot of space, square dimensions. And with a nice floor cover, we already flipped the one side. Of course, you can do the very same with the other one. And pretty rugged ground here. Yeah, I mean, it might be prone to scratches, yes, but I cannot get that up myself at the moment, just like that. So, very interesting area right here. So, storage right there. And also, of course, you can use it all the way up to the total height of that car. So, this looks really practical, pretty amazing. Then, since you also can get an air suspension here, you can lower the car to load things out easier. That's possible in there also to retract the towing bar. Outside you can see the car's 
definitely better. But we also want to show you what's going inside the booth here at Land Rover because we have some more color variations here. The shots won't be as clear just on this one here because this one is here on this floating water uh, platform. <laughs> Pretty funny, definitely. Three door in this light green color. But there are other colors exterior and interior available. Of course, we'll be getting a little bit crowded right here, but they can also for example, see this golden paint. This is a very interesting, unique paint. Not sure how many people will go for that, but just to show you that right here. This one and also with a darker or black interior. You can see here again the visible screws, but then on the outside car we had the bright one, this one here then with the all black interior. And it also has a black painted front hood. But I think the contrast then, you know, to the checkered metal elements here is not that big then when you have this black hood right there. Then there are more five door versions on display. For example here you can see on the top part there this is the one with a side ladder we know that from the old car and also with a top roof cover and you can put some 300 kilograms then on the top of the roof for real or more off-road usage silver paint then with a contrasting 110 hood sticker there we go so which color is your favorite here for today for the defender something you need when you only know from the jeep wrangler at the moment for example that you have those you know three door short cars short suvs and i mean why not so if you don't need you know five people in the car you can also drive a shorter car and I think it looks actually quite decent also in this short wheelbase version. What, what's your take on that? So why not, you know? So now, this one there. Ah, oh, it's close off at the moment. So we'd like to see the trunk, but you can see from the inside here, it's just like very short. And then you have the rear seats which you can fold. So you'll primarily lose the trunk. And of course, I mean, you have to go right in here let's see there it is of course limited then in the legroom you can still sit in the rear yes but of course limited in the legroom and then you either have a possibility to sit or you have some trunk left rear interesting this one is also the jump seat you know like in an airplane so with a three-seater setup in the front and I like those, you know, those joyful details also with a contrasting steering wheel. Well, with this five-door off-road display of the all-new Land Rover Defender, we end our today's review of this one here. Interesting, they kept a very iconic style also on the exterior. It's of course totally different from the outgoing model, yes, but it has an own distinctive style also if you compare other Land Rover or Range Rover models from the lineup. So I think it's a really interesting car and Maybe a new competitor to the Mercedes G-Class, for example. And the Jeep Wrangler is, of course, also a unique one. So very rare and unique cars there on the market. The good thing is, because of this angular design on the exterior, we have a lot of space on the interior. The best package from all Land Rover cars. That's pretty cool. So you can use a lot of the space you have. Then there are also, for example, those new PHEV engines available if you want to go a little bit more sustainable. Sustainable materials, we have to see about that. Of course, abundance of cow leather use here on the display cars. The quality of the interior materials is sometimes very good. So if I like those visible screws, those are cool elements, all those rugged elements. On the other hand, there are some parts which are, you know, not living up to the price of the car, which is extremely high, 50 to 90k. And that's, of course, my biggest criticism, criticism point with the car. Yeah, the G car is also very expensive, but from, you know, this rather off-roadish car, I would also expect to be, you know, a little bit cheaper than a little bit more affordable. Off-road use will be also quite cool, so it will still be also among the most capable Land Rover vehicles. Also, if you think about approaching engines, and not only the five-door, especially about the three-door. So, a lot to discuss with this vehicle. Please join us there in the comments. I hope you enjoyed also this part here.